aku kira nggak akan the opportunity also to present the body track software and also thank you very much for the opportunity for Java Medica for helping us to introduce this new way to teach the students in new way also to teach the to, to help the teachers also because in this specific moment that we have with the COVID it is not easy keep doing the practical classes in a remote distance learning and also giving also the possibility to make also the evaluation sessions also when the students are at home. Because we already know that when we are talking regarding mannequins, when we are talking regarding also the test trainers, for example, usually we can make the simulations inside the simulation center, but unfortunately we don't have the possibility to the simulation outside the simulation center because it's difficult to take the mannequins and the test trainers to the classroom for example and not always the uh, simulation center it is available we need to book in advance and with the body interact it's pretty easy because you can use in a big multi-touch table inside the, the simulation center and you can put all the people around this big multi-touch table that is a like ipad that all the people can engage with the virtual patient as if they are close to the real patient but on the other hand you can also bring the simulation outside the simulation center in a classroom for example and in a interactive way also explore the clinical case with all the people that be <coughs> inside the same classroom projecting to the wall, for example. Another way that I would like to detail it is when the students are at home and we, when we need also to make the distance learning environment, uh, I'm sure that it will be difficult to give them the possibility to use also the test trainers, for example, that unfortunately they cannot take the mannequins and the test trainers at home, but with the body tract, we have a built-in learning management system that allows us to make the training sessions when the students are at home, with making also the evaluations applying, for example, OSCEs. And this is also a great advantage in this specific moment that we live, because the teacher can be at home, the student can be at home, and for example, today, from one o'clock in the afternoon until three o'clock in the afternoon, we can select, for example, two clinical cases, four clinical cases, eight clinical cases, for example, that we will be inviting the students to performing when they are at home. They will be making the scenarios alone and they will also have the possibility to explore the personal report of each scenario. In the other hand, when the student finish one clinical case, the teachers will also receive the personal report of each student. So what they did performed as first priority, what they did perform as second priority, and what did they did perform regarding, uh, regarding second priority. Regarding the uh, way that we can also make it. There's three different ways that we can also use the body interact. You can also use the body interact like the model that we will be using today, that I will be sharing the screen and I will be asking your opinion about how to stabilize the patient, sharing the screen and doing a collaborative way, listen your uh, inputs and I will be driving the patient with the with my knowledge and also with your knowledge uh, and regarding the regarding the possibility to give the students the power to perform it at home so you can send the invitations but you can also give them the power to make them the presentation of the scenario so they can share the screen and they can also have the possibility to uh, be evaluating by all of you. 
I have here a short presentation. It's not a very big presentation with some slides regarding also the context. I don't know if you have until this moment any question or if I can go forward presenting this, this some slides just only to make a short introduction. So I will ask if Yasir can me, give me the profile to share the screen because I, I need to have it just only to yeah, sure. share. Okay, Thank you very share. much. I believe that you can probably hide your screen and give me the, the profile. I believe that in a couple of seconds we will make it. Okay. It is not very many, many, many slides, but it is only to give you a taste about the numbers of the physiological algorithm, also the number of clinical scenarios that we have and also what are the therapeutic areas that we are working now. In a couple of moments, I believe that I will be ready. Sorry for this short delay. In the meantime, if you have any comment or any question, please ask it to me, to Yazir or to Anthony also, because they are also ready to answer all the questions that you might have. In, in each period, if you would like also to have a translation, which please ask them, because unfortunately I will be not able to, uh, to help you in this case. But uh, I believe that it will be sometimes you can also ask them. We are just only having some difficulties to project the screen. The technology also have these kind of problems and these kind of challenges. Okay, right now I'm ready. Thank you very okay. much, Yasir. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So, and I would like to share with you also that the body interact needs consider the learning accelerator for medical and nursing education. We have been making many research studies all over the world. We work in 51 different countries and these 51 different countries also give us the feedback that the body interact is the learning accelerator for medical and nursing education. The main focus on the body interact is the clinical reasoning. It is not to train specific procedures, but with the main focus on the clinical reasoning, the body interact is the learning accelerator. It can be used in these big multi-touch tables like these, these big devices. It can be installed in iOS devices, Android devices, Windows computers, or if you would like, you can also use in a web browser. And in a web browser, you will be depending on the internet, but it, is, it will be more inclusive. We have been receiving some recognitions all over the, our life of the product because the company was founded in, to, founded in 2008 and we start uh, creating the body interact in 2010. We received the best product show award, for example, in the major conference in the United States of America, that it's the High Message Conference from the Society for Simulation in Healthcare. We also recently received the recognition from the United Nations from the United World Summit Awards, that is body interact one of the best products in the learning environment to empower the people in the healthcare area. We also received the European Seal of Excellence and many, many others. I would like also to underline that we work very close with the medical societies. For example, we work very close with the American Heart Association. Uh, they also use the product in uh, live events before the COVID and they also use the product after, during the COVID and previous than COVID, they also use, for example, for the distance learning approach, making also the e-learning projects. With the American Heart, they certify the competencies of their members also using and exploring specific different content package, specific different 
your clinical scenarios from the body interacting in this way they can give the certification to their community. And they also have a big community all over the world. We also work in the, with the Pan-American Trauma Society, for example, regarding the, Pan uh, the trauma scenarios with the European Society of Cardiology and many others. We work in two different levels, in the pre-graduate education and also in the professional development. Regarding the professional development, as I told you, in the post-graduation level, we work with the medical societies. And regarding the pre-graduate education, we work with the medical schools, with the nursing schools, with the teaching hospitals. We also have specific package for the um, emergency medical services, emergency medical technicians like the first responders. We work for and with the simulation centers although we also, in specific markets, we also work with the high schools in order to explain to the young students if they would like to go to the healthcare area, what they will be expecting regarding the patients. It will be just only a short introduction, and obviously that is not performing really clinical scenarios, but with the main focus, for example, when, on the dialogues, on the monitoring menus, and so on. And we are on board also with the certification providers. <clears throat> the best part on the body interact, it is the physiological algorithm. Because we have just only one physiological algorithm for all the therapeutic areas. And it means that right now we have 18 therapeutic areas. And it means that if I'm dealing with a patient, for example, in the cardiology area, and if I administrate something for the respiratory area, the patient health conditions in life, they will be also affected according to my decisions. So it is an experience very, very close to the real world. In this physiological algorithm, we have more than 60 interventions, more than 150 medical tests, more than 300 health conditions, and more than 300 medications. So it is an experience very, very close to the real world. We have scenarios in three different environments, in the pre-hospitalar environment, in the outpatient visit environment, and also in the emergency room environment. Regarding the pre-hospitalar care, we have the possibility to explore clinical scenarios when the patient is at home, in the office, in the street. Regarding the outpatient visit scenarios, it's how to manage the patient journey in a lifelong experience, for example, it can happen in three years, for example, five years, but just only having three appointments of contact also with the patient. Although our main focus, it is regarding the emergency room, because regarding the emergency room, it is our main focus because the feedback, it's immediate feedback, and we have this kind of environment. The whole the biggest number of clinical cases, it's focused on the emergency room scenarios. We have a great variety of virtual patients. We have from the babies, from the teenagers, from the pregnant women, from the adults, from the seniors. We have three difficult levels. We have clinical scenarios, <clears throat> specific design for the basic level. We have specific clinical scenarios designed for the intermediate level and also specific clinical scenarios designed for the advanced level. The main difference between these three different difficult levels, it is between the basic level and the other two levels. Because when we are dealing with a patient, for example, regarding the basic level, we will be just only having the possibility to select the family of the medication. It is for the young students of medicine, when they are not so familiar with the medication dosage, with the products, and so on. And it is in this way. Imagine that the patient requires uh, furosemide, a diuretic, for example. If we are dealing with the patient in the basic level, if this scenario was designed for the basic level, we will be invited to select the category of the medication. So I will be able to select just only the diuretics. And the system will give me, and will select it by me, the best product 
with the best via and also the best dosage, dosage to treat the patient. On the other hand, if we are dealing another clinical scenario designed for the intermediate or advanced level, what will happen, it is, I will select the family of the medication, for example, I will select diuretics, and after I need to select the product for Ozmid, for example, after I will select the administration via, it can be oral intravenous walls and so on. And last but not least, I will be just also selecting the dosage of the medication. This is the main difference for the three difficult levels for the seniors. And on body tract, we have an experience, as I share with you, an experience very, very close to the real world. And the body tract also gives us the stress of the real world, because we will be having in front of us a virtual patient. We already know that better than virtual patients, it will be having real patients, but unfortunately, not always, or fortunately, not always is possible. And we will be have in this uh, environment, the possibility to interact with a virtual patient. And the virtual patient also will have a timer, a counter, We'll have also some noises regarding the monitoring items, regarding the facial expression of the patient, because the patient will also have facial outputs. We also be seeing if the patient is conscious, if the patient is feeling pain, if the patient is sweating, if he's pallid. So it is a very engaging also platform that give us also the stress of the real world and give us also the stress of the time. On body interact, we have a proportional time. On body interact, 20 minutes on body interact are more or less one hour in the real life. So it means that the times runs three times more faster than in the real life. If I order, for example, in the emergency room, if I order an EKG, it will appear in 10 seconds, more or less. On the other hand, if I will ask for example, a biochemistry, it will appear in 45 seconds. So we try to keep this proportional time because it will be more faster, a little bit. And for example, when we are administrating also medication, we will have the same approach. So the medication will, uh, have, will make the effect three times more faster than in the real life. I promise that I will be just finishing these slides. I would like to talk regarding the learning management system that we have inside that allows you to combine a hybrid live classroom. You can combine the face-to-face -face classroom also with a distance learning classroom. The platform that we have, it is the Body Interact Studio and help us to track everything that the students are making on the Body Interact. Here, there are some pictures. <clears throat> I will be just only sharing four pictures to give you the idea about how it can work in a face-to-face -face environment. For example, here on the top left corner, you can see a student that is performing a clinical scenario on body interact alone. On the right side, you can see a student performing another clinical case and two teachers are evaluating him. And down, you can also see that the, patient, the student the students, all the group of the students is making also the clinical case in a collaborative way. And in this collaborative way, they are also performing the clinical case. So two students are touching the system, the teacher is mediating the discussion and the, all, the other, all the other students are also helping the students to perform the clinical case. I like also very much this last example because we have a gentleman that can touch the body interact system here. We have three teachers that are, are evaluating the students. The students are here and we have a real patient here in front of us. So it is also a possibility to engage the students also in a hybrid simulation environment because they can take the advantage of the real patients when they want to make questions they can address the questions to the real patients although when they would like to give medication to check the vital signs 
to make some exams, lab tests, imaging exams, and so on. And when they want to test what could be the effect of the different medicine products inside the patient, they can also use the body in track. So it is the way this, that also we found the possibility to mix these two ways. In this specific simulation session, what was used an actor that is participating as a real patient, but you can also use, for example, with mannequins and also with desk trainers. The secret is just only give the best user experience to the students in order to engage them in a different way. For example, you can have in this specific environment having the possibility to have the the possibility to have the patients in a specific environment in a classroom for example into face to face you can also combine these two different ways so i will share right now with you uh, from a global impact research study that we have been making, I will be sharing with you also the results, the highlights from the point of view of the students and also the highlights from the point of view also from the teachers. In the other words, it is the advantage that the students found when using the body tract and the advantage also that the teachers found when they were using the body in front. So in this impact study that we made worldwide from the student side, after a guided experience with the body in front, the students recognized that experience with the virtual patient with the simulator of the body in front was an enhancer for the clinical reason development and also the organization. And they also concluded, the students also concluded that the body tract promoted an integrated learning process in the domains of the individual and also academic learning process. Regarding the same impact study, but on the teacher's side, these are a couple of main conclusions that I select to present you today. So the teachers also comment that the volume track promotes clinical reasoning organization in students. The teachers also commented that the volume track reinforces the learning process in a class context. And the teachers also conclude that the volume track optimizes the discussion of the clinical case because in this way they can also simulate different patients. The scenarios are ready to use, and it is also this feedback. So that's all it will be the feedback from the machine. If you see it, you, you will be not necessary to check all the things that the students will be doing on the body track because the platform also have a tool that will help you to make a very rich debriefing to the students. They also saw that the body interact also helps in the development of the communication and teamwork skills in the soft skills, skills level level and obviously they also found that the body interact also promotes a student engagement uh, better than the other uh, products because it is a very engaging experience for the students also because they are the millennials generation the z generation they like very much the the ipads they like very much for example the touching system and they also want to learn every time in a fast environment they learn in the youtube for example they learn also using multimedia experience so but this promise right now me yazir and also anthony would like to make a short pause, a short break, in order to ask what are the questions that you probably might have, and we will be very happy to answer. Our suggestion will be answer in this specific moment some questions and some challenges that you would like also to have. If you would like to work, talk with him in your native language, please ask between all of you in your, in your native language. For my side, it's pretty comfortable. And after this short break, we will move forward to solve one clinical case. This first clinical case I will be making alone, 
just only to show you how the software works. And in a second virtual patient, I will be asking what will be the area that you would like to explore. And we will be making the clinical case together based on your experience. So the, the, the microphones are from your side. And thank you very much for listening to me uh, until this time. Okay, thank you, Silvario. Uh, jadi uh, demikian tadi pemaparan dari Silvario singkat untuk pembukaan pada presentasi siang hari ini. Nah, kita diberi waktu, dipersilahkan untuk break sejenak, boleh untuk berdiskusi dengan yang lain, atau kalau ada pertanyaan, uh, boleh disampaikan langsung kepada beliau, baik itu lewat chat maupun uh, lewat live langsung. Dan nanti jika memang sesi break ini sudah uh, selesai, nanti akan dilanjutkan dengan sesi simulasi langsung dengan software body interact. Jadi nanti dokter-dokter sekalian juga diundang untuk berinteraksi langsung dengan pasien virtual yang akan ditampilkan nanti di layar sesuai dengan pengalaman ataupun sesuai dengan kasus atau clinical case yang akan ditampilkan nanti. Silahkan mungkin kalau ada pertanyaan ataupun diskusi, monggo sambil kita break sejenak. Kemudian untuk penyampaian Mr. Silverio, kira-kira apakah cukup jelas atau perlu lebih jelas lagi mungkin bisa direspon, silakan. Monggo dari rekan anatomi mungkin. Uh, mau nanya untuk yang tadi tersedia di aplikasi ya Android atau iOS itu kapan ya? Uh, baik, jadi kalau untuk yang iOS itu memang sudah tersedia, tapi kalau untuk yang Android saat ini masih uh, dalam pengembangan sih dok. Masih dalam pengembangan. You know, I also understood your question. It's regarding the app from the Android and also from the iOS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I understood. <laughs> In Indonesia, we are famous uh, using Android, not iOS. <laughs> Okay, okay, and you also have. We have, since a long time ago, we start having the iOS version for the I I iPad. Also, we recently, re uh, more or less, Six months ago, we, we launched also the platform for the uh, iPhone. And two weeks ago, we also launched a version for the Android version. And it is also in a more integrative way. And because we, we have all over the world, many, many users with the Android devices. And you can keep using the online tool, but in my opinion, it will be a better user experience if you install it on your device and you are not depending on the internet. Although you will need to have a connection to the internet because when the students will be performing a case on the boarding track, at the end of the case, they can also need to send the results, the performance report to the cloud. But it is a short connection to the internet, just only to send the performance report to the teacher's area. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you very much. It was a very good question. Is it a, there's a big difference or not between the uh, phone or tablet version with the big screen? It is exactly the same version. So, but on the iPhone, for example, you will be using like this and all the menus are shorter. And if you are using with a tablet, the menus will be a little bit bigger, but it is responsive and you will be using as you would like. The user experience will be also the same. And imagine that you, as a teacher, you 
have at your mobile phone and you would like to share with the students the experience. You can also connect the short mobile phone to a big projector and you can also challenge them making. I do prefer to use in bigger devices, but we can also use in this specific device that are not so larger because the students, mostly part of the students also have the Android mobile phones, not the big Windows computers with them or the uh, also the tablets from Android. So that's why we also focus our development in these specific uh, devices. Uh, how about the, is it light or heavy for the application itself? <clears throat> no, it is more or less, when you are making the download, it is more or less 400 megabytes, more or less. And according to the number of the clinical case that you would like to have, for example, in my account, I have all the existing clinical cases that are more or less around 400 clinical cases and they, they occupy more or less 1.8 gigabytes, but with the whole library of the clinical cases. So it is not. My recommendation will be when you are installing the first time the app, I believe it will be better access in the Wi-Fi. And after you install it, when you put your credentials, the username and the password, I believe that it will be better if you connect with the Wi-Fi connection, just only to save some data from your plan. But after it will be very light to use with your plan because it is not consuming many, many, many data. We are always updating the clinical cases and also the platform. And once a month, it is always needed to put again the username and the password. In this way, the system will download all the new stuff that will be on the boarding track. Because imagine that we have this clinical scenario, the X clinical scenario. If a new guideline appear today, maximum between one week or two weeks, we will be updating the all clinical scenarios that are also based on this guideline in the clinical evidence in the protocol. That's why we always need to once a month make again the login to make the download of all the new uh, contents that will be available because we are always updating. Uh, it's for free for the new content. Yes, yes, yes. The updates, it's also. The license model is based on an annual license. And when you have the annual plan, you will be receiving always the updates and the upgrades that we will be making. Thank you. Thank Maybe. you very much for your great questions. Yeah, from other lecturer. Uh, from clinic, maybe from clinic. Mungkin mm -hmm. Dr. Septa, mungkin okay. Dr. Laks, no, Dr. Lasmi sudah nggak ada. Ya. So if there are no questions, we can probably receive the first patient of today, because I think that he is not feeling very well. <laughs> So I don't know if Dr. Septo would like to comment something. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to know uh, what is the difference between uh, these tools with the other, I think, uh, opportunity. And then uh, I asked to Mas Yasir, kita bisa dapat waktu untuk anu enggak, training enggak? Untuk, untuk coba aplikasinya. I oh, just yeah. asked. I'm not sure about uh, trying try the application. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Thank Dok. You jadi uh, setelah ini rencana langsung mau ke simulasi uh, aplikasinya langsung. Nanti mungkin dokter bisa langsung berinteraksi, misalnya dengan pasien tertentu, kemudian uh, ingin dilakukan tindakan-tindakan uh, tertentu, nanti bisa langsung berinteraksi. Itu mungkin yang dimaksudkan dokter Septa? Uh, dibandingkan dengan yang lain apa, Mas? Yang kelebihan keunggulannya yang bahkan banyak yang seperti ini. Oh baik. 
nanti mungkin bisa dilihat langsung aja dok ya apa namanya uh, disimulasi pasiennya jadi nanti dokter Septa bisa uh, membandingkan langsung tuh kira-kira uh, se- uh, kalau udah pernah lihat yang lainnya nah ini kita lihat body interact nanti mungkin uh, dokter Septa yang bandingkan nanti dok ya oke okay. shall we continue the presentation oke okay. so thank you very much for all these questions so let's <coughs> receive the first question of today It is not a COVID-19 patient, so we can keep calm. It is a patient that is suffering from a hypoglycemia. So here you can select, for example, the units that you would like to work. For example, if you would like to work in minimal by liter or milligrams by deciliter, I'm not sure about what is the units that we work. If you would like to work in minimal by liter, please let me know. If you would like to work with milligrams by deciliter, it will be ready to use. I don't know if you would like to implement some changes on the unities or not. So I believe that it is according to your needs. You can adjust the sound volumes and so on. I will be just only go down a little bit on the health monitors volume. And here you can also have the possibility to see what are the patients that we have in our library. So we may filter, we may put, for example, that I would like to receive the patient on the endocrinology specialist. It will be in the emergency room and the level of difficult, let's put intermediate case. Based on this selection that I made, I have the orange cards that are the intermediate difficult level. And I have here, for example, the Victor Jensen. Victor Jensen have 50 years old, 83 kilos and one meter, 85 centimeters. Here we can select the time that we would like to solve the clinical case between five minutes or 30 minutes. So it is just only the time that we will be having the possibility to solve the clinical case because nothing which will be impacted by this. So if we select 20 minutes, you already know that 20 minutes are more or less one hour in the real life. So the time will run three times more faster. The scenario will start with a short context briefing by the nurse that we will be start listening right now. 50-year-old man was found collapsed in his office. He regained consciousness and was driven to the emergency department by one of his co-workers. He is able to walk unassisted into the ED. He tells the triage nurse that he collapsed at work and now feels weak and overall not well. So here we have the possibility to see, to listen, some relevant information that we will take care of the patient. So... Sometimes the information is relevant and some other times the, interv- the information is not relevant. So I will press start and we will be receiving the patient in front of us in the emergency room. And there's not a predefined way that we can approach the patient. So if we would like to I'm feeling start really tired. monitoring the patient, we can start monitoring the patient. If you would like to start giving medication to the patient, you can give medication to the patient or it will be dynamic. To illustrate it, for example, I will start with the interventions. I will select catheters and tubes, and I will put a peripheral catheter. Inserting catheter. So here I will be not able to train how to make it, but I will be able to uh, give the order to put the catheter, and they will put it for me. If you, we are dealing in a face-to-face classroom, you can put a group of students inserting the catheter on the test trainer, for example, to train it. But on body interactive disease, just... So there's a pause button that we can also keep the patient in supine bed, or we can also sit the patient. There's the cameras that I can change the cameras and see the visual signs in more detail. So I can see that this patient is a little bit tired because the eyes are not so open looks a little bit pallid, but I'm not sure. And let, we can see that the patient is also sweating a little bit. 
On the middle camera, we can also see that the chest movements are normal. And regarding the lower members, the lower members looks that they are also normal. You can keep in this view or you can change for this view. We can make questions to the patient. I'm feeling really okay, tired. Victor, please wait a little bit. So regarding the dialogues, we have different categories, different questions to address to the patient. And although the questions will be the same all over the same clinical scenario, the answers will be different according to the patient health condition. So I will be starting making questions regarding the medical conditions. For example, Mr. Victor, how are you feeling right now? I will press the button of the question. I'm feeling weak. The feedback, for example, are you feeling any pain? No, I'm feeling and no pain. Regarding the medication, are you taking any medication? I'm taking this Gleeman, Demian once every day, and I'm also taking okay. aspirin, also right. once okay. every day. Have you felt any side effects from your medication? I have felt some dizziness lately. Could it be the meds? I believe that could, could not be the meds. And regarding the activity, how much do you walk each day? I haven't been walking much. So here it is to give you the idea that some questions make sense asked to the patient because they are priority questions and some other questions does not make sense to ask to the patient. For example, I asked to the patient how much you walk each day, but I think that it's not the first priority question to the patient, although I ask him. And here, as in real life, you can make everything that you would like to, because the patient will also give the feedback from the real world. Regarding the physical exam, I will go to the physical exam right now, explore the menu. On the physical exam menu, menu we have in the ABCD approach, we have different possibilities to explore the clinical case. For example, imagine that I would like to check the airway observation. I can order and I can see, see that the, if you see the airway observation. I'm feeling really tight. open, not obstructor and safe. No upper airway in all noises. So you can see, you can collect many informations that you would like to. Imagine that I would like to make the pulmonary auscultation. I will be driving the stethoscope and I will be listening the sounds, the real sounds connecting to the patient. Imagine that I would like to make the chest progression. There are predefined hotspots that I will be clicking and I will be also receiving the outputs as a sound. I can also make, for example, the chest palpation. There are predefined hotspots that I will be pressing and I will be also receiving the information. The same thing for the C, for the circulation. You can get capillary refill time, make the heart auscultation. If you would like to make the pulse palpation, you will be clicking the different hotspots and you will be also receiving the information. Regarding disability, for example, let's make the puppy light reflex, let's drive the light to the pupils and let's see if the pupils are reacting or not to the light. So you can have different possibilities. Although we are in this specific case, if we have, for example, a pregnant woman, the physical examination will be a little bit different because you can check the baby position, you can measure the fundal height and so on. So different physical examinations also for different clinical scenarios according to the needs of the different virtual patients. Some are priority physical exams and some other are non-priority physical exams. We can also monitor the patient I will be clicking in all. We can see that the temperature, for example, I'm feeling really tired. Is okay, so sorry, Victor. I'm just only introducing the platform for these friends. Mm -hmm. And here we can also see that the vital parameters, for example, the blood pressure, it is a little bit high, but I believe that it's not the main problem 
the pulse is good, breath rate, oxygen saturation, and so on. If you see right now the patient is not conscious, so it is not blinking the eyes. So it means that I, if I will address him a question, he will not answer to me. Here on this monitor, we have the tool lead monitor, but if you would like, you can also order here a Just a moment, ECG. here is the ECG. In a couple of moments, the ECG will be available. For now, it is available, and you can also see and comment that this patient is feeling fine regarding on the cardiology point of view because the patient is on sinus rhythm, so pretty normal. You can order more tests. I will order a, a full biochemistry has I been requested order, to the example, lab. For a chest X-ray. X-ray. We only need to get CT scan underway. In my opinion, it is not make sense order the head CT, but I order it just only to show you that every exam that I will be requesting, the exams, although they are not directly connected to the patient health conditions, the exams will also appear. So. We received a chest x-ray. We can see that all this is normal. The heart, it's a normal dimension. The biochemistry, we have here. And the parameters that are outside the reference interval are signalized with red. We can see problems in A1C and also on the blood glucose. So the patient is with an hypoglycemia. It is very close to the reference interval but it is in a hypoglycemia. Here, you can also see the HCT. You can see the MH in detail, but if you'd like, you can also call a report. So, according to the report, there's no evidence of focal lesions in the brain preakemia, cerebral ventricles for normal viewing of the patient's age, and so on. If you'd like to recap something that you have been making, you can also recap here in this folder. And you can see what have you been doing until this moment. Right now, as you see, the blood glucose, it is a little bit low. And I will be also make a mistake because the mistakes are also allowed it here. If I go to the medication, I will select the insulin and I will give eight units of insulin. I already know that if the patient is hip in, in hypoglycemia, the patient will be in hypoglycemia, in a severe hypoglycemia. So the medication is starting making effect. And if you see now the patient coded. <coughs> so we need to start making the life support. Applying chest compression. I will also intubate the patient. Proceeding to and to bed. With the invasive ventilation. And Done. Turning on ventilator. Of adrenaline. So right now I'm trying to recover the patient. I'm making the advanced life support, although I'm not touching in a really physical um, patient, I'm making it on the screen. So I apply the chest compressions, 100 per minute. I apply the ventilator and I apply the adrenaline. So we recover the patient, but as expected, we can see that the blood pressure is very low, the oxygen saturation is very low, and the hypoglycemia is still severe. So my strategy will be start giving some fluids to the patient to help him increase the blood pressure. I will give one liter, 500 milliliters. On the other hand, I will be also increase the blood glucose on the patient, I will give 80 milliliters of 30% glucose, I will be expecting, and if you would like, you can also change the patient position, raising the bed headward, and in this way, we will be also helping the patient to increase the uh, oxygen saturation, because the patient will be in a different position. If you see, our strategy is uh, in a good direction. The blood pressure is better than previously. That was very low. And let's check the blood glucometer that right now it is inside the reference interval. 
So if we would like, you can request the test again. I will request, for example, another A full example. biochemistry has I been requested to the lab. the previous bi biochemistry that we ordered. It is here. So this is the previous one. If you would like, you can also have outside. But let me put uh, there. And here it is the previous biochemistry. And let's see also the actual biochemistry. So the actual biochemistry also, it is on the left side and you can also compare the different results. So all this is very dynamic and all this is integrated. In my opinion, right now, we can probably change once the oxygen saturation is already 84%, I will put the patient on a high flow mask in One order minute. to not high flow mask in place. Let's wait from the patient's feedback. Uh, I believe that the blood pressure now it is a healthy parameter. The pulse it is a little bit fast, but I believe that it will be not the main problem right now. Regarding the clinical case, if you would like, we can select here, go to the debriefing, and we can go to the debriefing. We can also be invited to go to the debriefing if the patient is so unstable that we are invited to go to the debriefing or if the time was over. Another way, it will be receiving a message that we meet the guidelines and the patient is already stable. So if you see right now- I'm feeling the really tired. Open the eyes and it is already conscious. And if I will ask, having a medical condition, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling He's better feeling now. Better. So if you remind, in the previous first question that I addressed him, he was feeling weak. So all the questions are also dynamic. So we received this desired message regarding the end of the simulation that our practice meet the guidelines requirements and we can go to the debriefing. Going to the debriefing, <clears throat> we have a multiple choice question that we can also select the answer that we would like to give. Let's check that was an hypoglycemia and the feedback was this, the patient was really in a hypoglycemia. So right now we will be have access to the debriefing tools. When you give the clinical case, when the students are at home and they will be alone making the case, you will be having the possibility to share the debriefing tools with him or to do not share the debriefing tools with him. The decision is from your side. In my perspective, I believe that sometimes we will be better don't share the debriefing tools with them. And my explanation is very simple, because if they will solve the clinical case based on their knowledge, and if they go to the uh, debriefing tools, they will be know how to solve this patient how to solve this clinical case. And they will repeat the same clinical scenario, applying the knowledge of the debriefing, of the solutions of the case. So in my opinion, it will be better don't share with them in the first phase and share with them their own performance in a PDF document, for example, that you may also download in your area. But right now we have the possibility to check the debriefing tools and I will uh, explore the debriefing tools. I'm not sure if me, Yazir, and also Anthony could help you uh, clarifying some doubt that you can probably have, or if we should also keep uh, forward to make the, the debriefing tools explanation. If you have a question, please ask us, and it will be a pleasure for us giving you also the answer. I'm not sure if you would like to change also point of views, comments between all of you in your native language. It is not a problem from, from, from me and from us. Baik, untuk sejauh ini, apakah ada yang ingin bertanya dari simulasi yang telah dilakukan oleh Mr. Silverio tadi sebelum kita berpindah ke halaman uh, debriefing.
Terry Macassi. And now we can go to a, go to the exploration of the debriefing tools. So right now I will share again the screen. There's some areas that we can explore. I like to explore all the areas. For example, we have here the possibility to see the whole timeline of the actions. We can go forward. And if you see all the vital monitors are connected. If you would like, you can also see again the exams that we be performing. We can also see the report in order to discuss if our strategy was a good strategy strategy or if it was not a good strategy. We can comment the exams, we can comment if it was a need request this kind of exams and we can also understand what was the impact of our decisions in the untreated conditions of the patient. So if you see in the beginning of the case the patient is the untreated conditions are just only the hypoglycemia. Let's go a little bit down in order to check, for example, right now, if you see on the vital monitors parameter, you can see that the patient was healthy patient, although it was a low level of blood glucose. And if you go down, you can see that the blood pressure dropped down. And the explanation is due to our strategy to give the eight units of insulin. So it was also impacting. We perform the advanced life support, and after we have to treat the severe hypoxia, severe hypoglycemia, and also the hypotension. If you see, regarding the hypotension, we treated when we gave <clears throat> here the previous, when we gave the crystalloid, for example, we can see that was impacting. And the same thing, when we gave also the blood glucose, the, the intravenous bolus glucose, 30% glucose, 80 milliliters. You can see that we gone from 35 blood glucose to 110, 107, and all the same. At the end of the case, we can see that we treated everything, the hypoxia, the tachycardia, everything that was requested. We can see also here a score that regarding the physical examination, for example, I missed some items on the circulation because I should request the capillary refill time that I did not request it. I can probably also make as a second priority the heart auscultation that I did not request it. And regarding the urinary output, I performed, I requested the urinary output that is not a priority in this specific clinical case. Regarding the disability, I should also request a Glasgow coma scan. Although I was talking with the patient and after I was trying to talk with the patient and the patient was not conscious, I should also request a Glasgow coma scan. Regarding the diagnostic activity, I can talk a little bit more with the patient. I just only made two first priority questions, two second priority questions. And I address one question that was not a priority. So I receive also a penalty because I was performing this question. Regarding medication, we can see that I applied one medication in the first priority item or the second priority. I can also apply. There's multiple ways to solve this clinical case. But once I applied one possibility, it will be enough. Regarding the knowledge area, regarding the competencies, we can also see what were the competencies that we have been working on. And here we also have the full report of the competencies that we worked. Here we can see the learning goals, the specific learning goals, the general learning goals, and so on. And we may also see what are the scientific reference that we based the scenario that we are always updating. And if the teacher would like, the teacher can also add some resources here to the learning resources area. And it will be possible to add specific resources to specific clinical cases. So if you have this case that you would like to put a PowerPoint document, a PDF document, or a movie, you can also add this content to this specific area. And in this way, you will be empowering in a different way the student regarding the different thematics that you will be also exploring. 
So we finished this presentation of the case, how it works. I don't know if you would like also to explore a different clinical case regarding your clinical area. If you would like to explore also a little bit how the learning management system, the bot interact studio, also how it works to design the sessions for the students, to see the scenarios that are in my account, to apply Hoskies and so on. So the decision is from your side. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we, Aziri and Anthony, would like to listen now from you. So thank you so much, Mr. Silvario, for the great, great presentation. Uh, itu tadi presentasi dari Silvario. Uh, apa namanya? Jadi dari satu kasus atau dari satu pasien. Sepanjang itu hal-hal yang bisa kita lakukan terhadap pasien tersebut. Nah nanti masih ada pasien-pasien lain dengan clinical scenario yang lain juga. Barangkali ada dokter-dokter sekalian yang tertarik di bidangnya untuk melakukan apa namanya simulasi bisa kita tampilkan juga di sini. Kemudian kalau ada pertanyaan-pertanyaan lain yang berkaitan dengan presentasi pada siang hari ini. Uh, kami persilahkan kepada dokter-dokter sekalian, silakan. Kemudian kepada para peserta sekalian yang mungkin baru saja join, saya akan share ulang link presensi pada siang hari ini yang nanti pada peserta yang sudah mengisi presensi tersebut kami akan mengirimkan video rekaman presentasi pada siang hari ini ataupun kalau ada pertanyaan di luar sesi siang hari ini bisa ditanyakan via WA ataupun via email yang akan kami kirimkan kepada Bapak Ibu sekalian. Uh, anyway, Silvario, uh, Dr. Septa is asking what is the difference between uh, Body Interact and the other uh, platform uh, with, with the other similar platform like Body Interact uh, and yeah. Okay, the difference is that the main difference is the physiological algorithm that on both interact you can work as you work in the real world because we have just only one physiological algorithm that is a huge physiological algorithm that you can work in different different areas at the same time and it also allows you to make mistakes. So if we are dealing in one direction and if the case is cardiology case, for example, if you apply a different medication, a different strategy, it will be also available. So the exams you can order in the exams appear. If you give some medication product, you will be Immediate. The similar platforms that we have regarding our uh, body interact, it is more focused, for example, regarding the possibility to have the feedback. Not always the feedback is immediate, but sometimes if you order an exam, the exam will be not available. And at the end of the case, you will be just only received in a text base not in a 3D real engine, you will be receiving a feedback based on text regarding. From the outdoor perspective of the case, this case, you need to approach the patient in this direction, you need to make it. So, so it, you, are, you will be not receiving the feedback from your actions, but you will be receiving the feedback in text from the outdoor point of view of the case. So it was not a feedback based on the things that you have been making on, <clears throat> but it will be a feedback based on the things that you should make it. So it is not a tailored debriefing to the user, 
but it is uh, the same debriefing for all the users. Because sometimes we also see some competitor platforms like us, and when we see the description, we always think the same thing. So it is with another brand. But every time that we will be exploring, there's a huge difference. And the difference between the algorithm, the difference between the immediate feedback that it is more text-based. And the same thing for the patient. You can receive the patient and there's descriptions regarding the patient is sweating, the patient is feeling pain, but you don't see the facial expressions. These are the main difference that I would like to underline. And another big difference is also the credibility of the users, because we also are on board with the certifications providers worldwide, that they also review our product based on guidelines, clinical evidence, and so on. And they also review the product, they also use the product, and they also help us to keep working on the product, making updates, and also making new clinical areas. These are the main differences that I would like also to share with you. But Yazir and Anthony would be also very happy to share with you a couple of trial licenses that you can explore the product for two weeks, for example, with the specific clinical cases that you would like to. And in this way, you will be having the possibility to, during two weeks, have teacher accounts for the people that you would like to share in order to give some lessons to the students and also to collect the feedback also from the students and also to test it, the algorithm in the clinical cases. We usually make all this. When the um, institutions decide to move forward with the subscription, we always have training sessions. We make training sessions to train or on how it works the simulator. And we also were, were make training sessions in order to give explanation about how the learning management system also works. So we are also available to answer all the questions. Although we are not always in the same time zone, we are always giving the support. The first timeline support will be provided also for Java Medica because they also have a great experience about the mistakes the misunderstood that probably can help also on the platform, but we will be also always available to answer at the same day according to your requests. For the teachers, we make the training sessions, but for the students, we do not make training sessions because mm -hmm. we have a specific web page when we have the frequently asked questions and they will find an explanation to each doubt that they have. And the explanation is based on text, but it is also based on video because we trust uh, that the video, it is also a great way to empower and to explain the people. <laughs> I don't know if I was clear. If I'm not, please uh, ask the, the points that you would like to, to analyze in a more deeper way. Baik, mudah-mudahan sudah menjawab pertanyaan Dr. Septa ya. Kemudian saya juga tadi uh, uh, merevisi di mana apa namanya uh, kami juga baru dapat informasi bahwa ternyata untuk uh, versi Android itu dua minggu yang lalu sudah dirilis. Jadi saya sudah coba cek juga di Google Store uh, apa namanya software Body Interact uh, ada di situ. Nah, nanti untuk Uh, install kemudian untuk mencoba trial segala macam buat interact menyediakan free trial juga kepada uh, dokter-dokter sekalian jika menghendaki untuk mencoba free trial tersebut nah, nanti bisa kami bantu bisa kontak uh, kami via email ataupun WA yang uh, akan kami kirim nanti kemudian perlu saya tambahkan uh, sedikit juga Uh, untuk jadi software apa body interact ini uh, basically bentuknya adalah software yang bisa kita pakai ataupun kita install uh, di laptop kemudian di PC Windows uh, ataupun uh, di HP Bapak Ibu sekalian tapi yang mana uh, bentuk produknya ini adalah subscription jadi kita uh, berlangganan berlangganan tahunan ataupun bulanan uh, untuk mendapatkan kasus-kasus uh, atau 
uh, skenario-skenario uh, pasien body interact ini nah, nanti mungkin kalau memang uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian uh, tertarik mungkin kami bisa kirimkan uh, proposal ataupun uh, press list untuk menjelaskan uh, apa saja yang didapatkan apabila membeli uh, produk tersebut Halo Ya, ya dok Ya, uh, saya tadi mengikuti dari awal ya. Jadi ya, baik. ini kan uh, apa itu software ini kan sudah jadi ya. Ada ready for use. Iya betul sekali dok. Uh, jadi, nah ini ini saran saja ya. Jadi uh, kita sebenarnya di di kedokteran di Indonesia nggak membutuhkan itu. Jadi yang yang kita butuhkan ya. ya. Jadi media pembelajaran yang bisa dikembangkan di sini. Misalnya tadi saya lihat referensi, referensi yang digunakan uh, adalah standar Amerika, misalnya ya. Jadi, jadi uh, di dalam di, di kedokteran itu ya, memang internasional ya. Tetapi eh, di dalam prakteknya kita itu mengikuti kebijakan lokal ya. Misalnya obat yang digunakan bisa saja tidak ada. Baik. Nah, ini. Kalau punya software yang fleksibel, itu yang ditanyakan, yang saya kira dikhawatirkan Dokter Septa tadi ya. Jadi ini mesti ada yang yang bisa, artinya misalnya medikasi ya, kita ya, menggunakan ini atau pemeriksaan yang mana dulu, uh, 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 yang seperti itu. Kalau itu ada yang uh, bisa dikembangkan lebih fleksibel gitu ya. Soalnya nanti gini. Kalau kita gunakan ini gunakan untuk diskusi dengan mahasiswa. Ya, ya ini kan berupa skenario uh, from text to visual kan gitu ya. ya. Ini tambahnya visual aja. Jadi itu kalau sama persis dengan textbook, maka ya ya tidak ada gunanya. Makanya eh, kita perlu yang yang dari Indonesia. Jadi kalau misalnya mau mengembangkan ini ya, ya. Uh, cari fakultas kedokteran. Misalnya kami ya. ya. Jadi kami nanti diajak untuk untuk uh, mengembangkan apa itu? Iya mengembangkan. Jadi untuk di Indonesia. Jadi misalnya penanganan sama pasiennya diabetes mellitus. Secara prinsip internasional sama, tetapi di Indonesia mengikuti kolegium di Indonesia gitu loh. Baik. Uh, jadi nanti uh, diskusinya nggak dua kali. Jadi nanti dosen nggak menjelaskan. Oh ini di Amerika gitu loh. Di di Indonesia tidak memakai itu obat ini nggak ada gitu loh. Jadi oleh karena itu, jadi nggak dua kali. Uh, baik, jadi, baik. jadi itu saya kira kritik dari uh, uh, kami ya. Baik. Saya dari bagian patologi ya. Jadi kalau ada, sebenarnya kalau mau ya kita juga bisa sebenarnya ya. Cuma kan kalau orang kedokteran sendiri nggak punya waktu gitu loh. Jadi orang IT nah nanti menawarkan. Oh ini nanti bisa bisa diisi diisi dan sebagainya. Uh, dan teman-teman yang di klinik itu banyak kasus ya. Banyak kasus yang bisa uh, ya, Pak, Pak, Pak. Saya kira itu Oke. Yang Baik, terima kasih dokter Menawi atas masukannya uh, Masukan oh, buat kita ya, uh, Body Interact nanti coba Akan kami sampaikan juga ke pihak uh, Body Interact juga Terima kasih banyak dokter Menawi Yang berikutnya Anu Baik, monggo mungkin ada uh, pertanyaan atau saran masukan yang lainnya. Kami tunggu. Artinya tidak ada lagi pertanyaan yang lain. Kalau memang tidak ada, mungkin bisa kita akhiri, Dokter Ancah ya. Ya, saya rasa sudah cukup jelas ya. Itu tadi ada request ya, versi ya. Indonesia begitu. Karena memang berapa case mungkin berbeda, treatmentnya juga berbeda. Betul, betul. Ya, kami paham, Dokter. paham. Baik. Uh, gitu aja, berarti kita tutup untuk uh, presentasi atau sesi demo pada siang hari ini. Kami persilahkan juga 
kepada peserta-peserta yang baru join mungkin untuk bisa mengisi kembali link presensi yang sudah kami share di kolom chat. And thank you to Mr. Silverio for the great great presentation uh, this evening and uh, yeah Thank you very much for the opportunity you gave me. It was a great opportunity. As always, it is a great pleasure also to work with Java Medica to represent us in this specific country. But Portugal also has some very good connections in Indonesia. Uh, so it, we, we are, for, for us, it, we are very proud to be in touch with you. We would like also to collaborate with your institution and also help the students to have a better knowledge regarding also the medical education. And we strongly believe that we can also make some part of the history of the clinical education also in Indonesia, like in many, many other countries that we have been working on. So thank you very much and let's keep in touch when giving all the information that you would like to have from our side and also from Java Medical side. For me, it was a pleasure to uh, keep uh, uh, talk with you during this, this time that we have been the opportunity to have this meeting. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Silvio, bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you very much. Bye -bye.